Welcome everybody to the Los Angeles Blender Users Group. And my name is Sterling Getz. And uh, welcome to the World Blender Meetup Day. We've been running the Los Angeles group for uh, about two years now. We met up at SIGGRAPH here in LA. Met the Blender Foundation there. Met Tan Rosenthal and his whole uh, team. And we've been kind of meeting ever since. So this seems to be a kind of a regular location for us. We get a, a really wide array of people <laughs> that come to our meetings, and the meeting attendance varies somewhere between usually around like 10 to 20. So depending on how hard we market it and what, how many channels and stuff. We are broadcasting here. Compliments of David from Theory Animation. We're rebroadcasting on a Zoom service, and we're also rebroadcasting via YouTube. And this is our agenda for today. So I'm going to do a quick like uh, 10, 15 minute intro on who we are. We'll do a quick round table about who, you know, who's in the room. And then we'll talk a little bit about what's new with Blender, share some Blender news together. And then uh, we're going to ask for a Stanford Blender users group introduction from Michael Richards. So that group is meeting right now on the other side of the country and uh, they're going to tune in and do an intro, and then we might take a, a quick social break, and then Sam Villa is going to uh, kick off with Octane Render for Blender. We have David is joining a little bit later, going to do an update on SIGGRAPH 2014, as well as a report on current work, and then we'll just open it up to whatever you guys want to talk about and help yourself to bagels. <laughs> I think I seriously overbought bagels today. All right, so... The World Blender Meetup Day, the whole concept of it really just started at our last meetup in May. Uh, we, we decided it'd be kind of fun to try to connect different user groups together on a single day. I picked a day. I picked it right in the middle of European holiday schedule, so uh, probably my bad uh, that we don't have more Europeans online. But we were talking about what day would make it an even better World Blender Meetup Day for the next. The good news is that we have managed to make contact through a lot of cyber stalking and back and forth, a huge amount of email chatter. We have a World Blender Meetup Day email group. We've been getting in touch with city leads, and we've talked to all of the people on this slide. The folks that are at the top of the slide, they're the ones that are joining. The people down below, they're the ones that, for one reason or another, couldn't make it today and might make it to the next one. And the whole idea is that everybody has the meetup in their local time zone. Whenever it makes sense to them, they schedule their own sessions. Some groups, they get together more as a social activity, and some groups, they uh, get together more of kind of session talking. So we're more of the latter. Normally, at our bigger meetings, we actually have one or two people that actually have never even seen the package before, and they're just interested. So um, you guys familiar? I'm familiar with it. We haven't yeah. I've been playing around with it a little bit. We're mainly with mine. Oh, okay. So you're Maya user. We yep, we get a lot of crossover with Maya Moto stuff like that. So I'm just gonna just for fun show you what it looks like. So it's it's basically open source software for modeling, shading, animating, rendering, compositing, interactive 3D. Uh, most people are really attracted to it because it's free, um, but it's an extremely capable package, and most people stay with it because the community is really awesome. Uh, the developers are super responsive. Um, it's fast moving. Literally every two months, we get a new Blender version with new features. So we're in Beacon 3, I think, at the moment, which is like a version freeze and bug fixing. But let's see. So we'll jump in here and fire it up. So this is Blender. I don't like to go too far in the meetings without actually showing the app because a lot of the stuff we talk about is theoretical. So this is version 2.71, which was released a little while ago. Uh, we're currently in uh, the, the foundation is currently in development of 2.72. I'm sure we'll walk through a bunch of this a little bit later on. Why don't we just take a few minutes and do like a around the room introduction. I'll start with myself. Sterling Getz, I live here in LA. I'm an IT consultant by day and I'm a Blender enthusiast by nights and weekends. Been using Blender for about, coming up on four years. Which, but yeah, I use it for mostly personal projects. And why don't we go this way? LA. Uh-huh. Um, I'm just a novice. I just enjoy playing with it. Nothing to do with my career, right? Okay, great. Uh, my name's Robert Crosby. Uh, kind of a novice, uh, kind of up and on off wonder. Uh, have used it a little bit of work, but not the main thing I do. <laughs> yeah. So I, I live up in uh, Santa, in the Santa Barbara area, and uh, came down for this meeting. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, you you got a haul to come down to these. We really appreciate you coming. Yep. Oh, yes. I'm I'm Gary Klein. I, I'm a previous artist. 3D 
Okay, awesome. Uh, Darren Jones, I work at Fox TV just in operations, but I'm making a little cartoon. Uh, my comic book a couple of years ago, and now I'm trying to animate the characters. Awesome. Come on, it's Mandy. I'm the, the camera around so we can run a of facts. I've been doing high end visual effects work for about 20 years. Uh, I live in LA, um, and I've only just started playing with Blender, trying to. Look for an alternative to Maya because I don't like it anymore. Um, and uh, yeah, that's it. Awesome. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Chris. I'm a compositor and I also work at Filmer FX. Um, my main reason for Blender is pretty much the same reason as Ken because I just kind of want to get out of Maya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. I'm Will. I also work at Filmworks, more of a 3D generalist. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of interested in Blender in general. Haven't really used it at all. So uh, here you now, word of mouth, it's cool stuff. So right on. Why not check it out? <laughs> uh, what, uh, what do you guys do at Filmworks FX? Um, or what's what's the company about? Um, well, we do a lot of different stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. the main thing we we've done for um, you know the majority of the company has been in like high end digital effects work. Like we did stuff like the Matrix, the Solid Fight Club. Um, we're working on David Fincher's new film right now. Um, we're we do like Hitchcock. Um, we also produce our own films, so mm -hmm. we've done about twelve feature films. Um, we all, I also used to own a film lab when people actually shot films, so we also did film processing, telecine, um, editorial, we did DI work as mm -hmm. well, um, and we also are we share our facility with. 424 Post, he's a Academy nominated sound facility. Mm -hmm. We did movies like we did Apocalypto together. Um, they did like Passion of the Christ. So it's kind of like a, a, a whole cohesive um, but a company. We're really trying to move away from service because that is pretty much gone and get into a lot more of uh, creating our own content. Mm -hmm. um, we also have a comic book division that we share with uh, Stranger Comics. So. Part of our pipeline is we develop scripts, we turn them into comic books or graphic novels or children's books, and then keep developing them through the process and service them ourselves. Kind of like the Pixar model is what sure. we're trying to move more toward. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. There are uh, folks producing comics using Blender. I can like, yeah. like provide some pointers if you're interested. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that sounds great. Um, why don't we start with you, and then we'll go to the back of the room. So, JT? JT Nelson, I'm the co-organizer here. I do presentation graphics and motion graphics for live events. I just did Weird Al Yankovic's event at Comic Con, and he agreed to let me do some custom animation for him. So the crowd really loved it. If you get a chance, I'll show some of it today. Um, and then I organized the meetings here and all over the Southern California region. Awesome. Uh, back of the room. Uh, good. No, that's right. Quick intro. Sure. Uh, my name is Ken Mora. Uh, I'm a CEO of Double Face Company, which is the inspiration of Ken Mora. <laughs> and uh, actually, I have a, an animator in Mexico City uh, who's doing a great job for me. Works in Blender. I'm learning it myself. Then getting all the resources together by February next year, I have to go to the Blender Farm and something to produce stuff. Uh, we're doing a CG animated group of Dirty Harry films. <laughs> and uh, Bill Clinton is uh, the executive producer. I'm also managing a sort of place global jam where animators take three seconds of this Oscar nominated short and render the whatever style they, they choose. Awesome. Thanks, Ken. Hi. We'll get around. <laughs> okay, sounds good. All right. Um, so that's there's about ten <laughs> there's about ten of us in the room here, and we've uh, just done the introductions. Dave, you want to maybe introduce yourself online, and we could ask whoever else is on the to intro intro. We have like 15 people on YouTube now. Uh, we don't have bagels for you guys either. Sorry. <laughs> Next time. Uh, I'm David Andrade. I used to be over in Los Angeles and a part of LA.Blend, and uh, I moved to Florida, and I started a studio in Florida. It's called Theory Animation. Uh, it's a bit of a misnomer, though, because uh, all of our team works remotely, and we're, we're going to go over that a little bit later, but we have artists all over, and we help 
sponsor the online broadcast portion uh, of LA.Blend. And of course, today we're helping broadcast uh, to around the world. And we had 75 people for Australia. So let's see how many we can get for, for Los Angeles and Portland. It's going to be really fun. But yeah, uh, I'm David Andrade, and you'll get to see me a little later. Okay, awesome. Michael, we'll ask you to introduce you and your, you and your group in a little bit. So um, we, we last, <laughs> I have to dig through my uh, emails to actually figure out when our last meeting was, because it's been a while now. I think it was May 22nd was our last meeting. Um, I'll uh, reiterate it here. Uh, we're happy to have as many meetings as you guys like. It's driven by how many people put up their hand to present sessions. So everybody can present on Blender. There's always, there's always something you can present, even if it's on a book review or an event report or you know a, maybe a new feature you're checking out. So we strongly encourage it. But since May 22nd, a lot has happened. Uh, we've had Blender 2.71 is shipped. I'm sure we've all been using it for quite some time. Uh, Blender 2.72 is in development, and we'll talk a little bit about what that's starting to look like in a couple of slides. We had a SIGGRAPH in Vancouver this year, uh, which unfortunately I didn't attend, but we did have representation at the Blender Birds of Feather there, announced this event. Um, and, uh, you know, Ton usually presents on where Blender's going and what's happening. Um, and then they get up and have like a open forum for people to present their projects and so forth. We, uh, let's see, there's a Blender conference that's coming, BConf. Uh, that happens in Amsterdam. That's in October, I believe. Anybody confirm that? I think it's October. Anyways, tickets are on sale. Um, they're accepting papers and presentations. Um, it's a great conference. The whole thing is rebroadcast on the internet, so you can catch recorded sessions. It looks awesome. We've had some of our local guys. We have uh, Sean Kennedy, uh, previously from Rhythm and Hughes, actually comes to these meetings and usually does like compositing talks. He actually did a session at the last one, Blender in Hollywood movies, and explained how uh, Blender's been used in small aspects of the Hollywood films that he's been involved in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the one with the little birds. Yeah. That's the one with the little birds and the yeah. dust and like, you know, I mean, when I say small bits, small bits. We've also had a relaunch of the Blender Cloud. So the Blender Cloud is something that the Blender Foundation established recently to fund the Gooseberry Pilot and the cloud. Uh, it's like a monthly membership. It's really reasonable. It gives you access to a lot of their training content. And as they're developing uh, Gooseberry assets for the film, those all become available. So you're, you're like really tied in to the development process, yeah, full visibility. <clears throat> CG Cookie also launched uh, Blender Market, which is a, it's a commercial market for Blender add-ons and basically enhancements to Blender. Uh, there's some really awesome stuff there. I've, I've bought stuff off that market, like uh, rendering enhancements and uh, things like that. <clears throat> Encourage you to check it out. Google Summer of Code uh, has just finished, and all the results of that are published online. So every year, uh, the Blender Foundation applies for a certain number of uh, Google Summer of Code sponsored student spots to develop different interesting bits to Blender. And then uh, students create a proposal on what they want to enhance or develop in Blender. And then they're mentored by uh, the developers of Blender throughout the process. And we've actually gotten some pretty cool features from that. I, I always forget what went into the Google Summer Code. So I've got a little cheat sheet here. Uh, there's been like 103 game engine fixes. So fantastic if you're into the game engine. Uh, lots of good stuff there. Um, I can't really speak to, to a lot of these, like NURBS modernization. Uh, the cycle's performance and memory and, uh, optimizations are actually done by Thomas Dengas, who's like one of our primary cycles render engine developers these days, now that Brecht is left for solid angle. Can't really speak to quadrilateral remeshing based on harmonic functions. I feel like I need a math degree to talk to that. If, if anyone knows these features, by the way, feel free to raise your hand. Um, what I'm really excited for is the Manta Flow integration. So there's a fluid sim application called Manta. Um, I haven't used it myself, but um, it looks pretty functional, and a lot of that code is being ported into Blender. And uh, the fluid simulator in Blender is nice, but it's uh, it's something I, I think could use a little love. So I'm glad that uh, that's happening. Shape key editing sounds self self-explanatory, but it's probably not. And then viewport effects 
is kind of a, an effort to speed up the viewport in, vendor, in Blender, so it's a lot of under the covers architectural stuff. Yeah, does anybody have any other comments on Google Summer Code stuff? No? All right. Um, <clears throat> so there's been, uh, so the Gooseberry pilot, what it is is uh, the Blender Foundation does an open movie every couple of years to progress features in the, op in the application. Uh, this year, there was a big crowdfunding exercise to get money for a Gooseberry feature film. It's the first time they've ever tried to do anything more ambitious than a short. Um, they fell short of their funding, but what they did get was enough funding to produce a pilot to, to try again uh, and seek investment. Um, there's also some funding that comes along with that from, uh, I think, a, a, one of the European film boards or... Uh, uh, Netherlands Film Board, it's, it's something to that effect. But they're developing uh, collaboration, I'll say, it's called Red Current, um, Asset Management and Collaboration Tools. So it's for helping kind of small studios collaborate on developing assets in Blender for doing filmmaking. Uh, so that's exciting, there's a lot of updates there. Um, there's a bunch of new training out. We have Creature Factory 2, that's up on the Blender Cloud. Um, that's Andy, for, Kravalski, I think. Uh, I apologize, Andy, if you're watching this recording for butchering your name. Um, and that is what you see in the lower right-hand corner. Um, it's kind of creating uh, this nice organic monster type thing. We have Freestyle Level Up, which is over here on the left. So Freestyle is the line draw portion of Blender. So it allows you to uh, draw over the top of things and create non-photorealistic looks everything from manga to hand-drawn sketch to all sorts of stuff. Also, uh, there's been, let's yeah. see, what else? Uh, so there's a new CG Masters, uh, Complete Environment and Animation training that's been produced. That's what this is here. Uh, and then their Blender is now officially on Digital Tutors. So Digital Tutors makes a whole bunch of training on a whole bunch of different packages. And Blender's been added to their list. They're usually pretty well regarded for doing high quality stuff. There's been, of course, loads of add-ons and scripts and all sorts of stuff added to Blender. Just way too many for us to cover here. So I'm just going to mention a few so you get an idea of the sort of things that go in. Uh, there's a cross-platform game publishing add-on that allows you to kind of develop a game and then create a, a package that bundles everything together to run on multiple platforms. There's like a Blender muscle system that somebody's developed, uh, which apparently is quite a difficult thing to do. I already talked about Red Current, Asset Management and Collab. Uh, and then there's, at any given point in time, there's a bunch of Blender contests going on. Blender Guru runs contests, Blender Cookie runs contests. Uh, Bart at BlenderNation.com runs contests on the weekends. Bart, by the way, was one of the sponsors for getting this whole Blender World Meetup Day together. Uh, so uh, information distribution sponsors. And then I usually put this link at the bottom of the, the slide. Just to, if, if you're looking for work in the CG industry, uh, lots of good jobs out here for visual effects, CG, game development, as well as on the programming side. Any other developments folks want to mention? There was a mention of the, the Plimpton animation event. I think oh. we, we mentioned that during the last meeting, but let's have it again. Yeah, uh, there's still spots uh, open, uh, a couple, two phases. Uh, one is uh, three seconds each of the original uh, Oscar nominated short that people render in their own style. So a few spots open, and then as people fail to meet that they'll, they'll inevitably another spot or two. And then we're working on composition for the new jam, uh, which will be more uh, uh, freewheeling. Uh, so if you want to sign up for either of those, it's at yourfaceglobaljam.com. OK, awesome. Hey, before we before I forget, we had a couple of people walk in a little bit late. Uh, would you guys mind doing a, a quick introduction of who you are, what you do, what your interest in Blender is? Uh, sure, I'm Robin Rowe, and uh, I'm a uh, producer and do game, TV, and film. Uh, and uh, my company's called Gosh. We're at the lot of Ali Studios in, in Hollywood, Mr. Paramount. And I'm also sometimes uh, Work on Cinepaint, Paint, which is a long forgotten uh, deep paint package that I haven't had time to work on in like two years, but I still do. Really <laughs> getting some time off and actually doing more. Well. Not, not forgotten, obviously, one of the landmark pieces of software and CG, right? I mean, so it's kind of fallen from view now because sure. I've been working crazy hours 
two years on the same project. Sure. My name is Vina Bentley, and I'm from Orange County. Sure. Um, I'm interested, interested in everything Blender, except coding. I don't know anything about coding, but um, just uh, interested in learning new styles and new things to do with it. Okay, and you you arrived in perfect timing. We're actually just we're actually just uh, introducing ourselves. So okay, yep. In the back, if you want to. Uh, Brandon uh, Perlo, um, and I'm interested in Blender because it looks really cool. All right, it is really cool. So you reached the right place. <laughs> yeah. I'm Pixel. I'm a programmer. I used to do 3D stuff a long time ago. Now I'm here because I gave Brandon life. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, welcome to both you guys. So we're up to about 16 in the room for those that are joining us online. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about what's coming in version 2.2. And I put the question mark here because nothing's ever final until they ship the code, right? So um, it's a, it looks like a relatively modest release. Uh, there's improved glossy and volume sampling and cycles. Uh, as we all know, uh, Volumetrics was recently added to Blender, and so there's some optimization happening. Uh, I've used Volumetrics a little bit, and I will say it's, it requires uh, a decent amount of CPU um, to render, so I'm glad that that's happening. Um, this is kind of indicative of what happens with Google Summer of Code. Code is that what happens is students develop it to a point, and then it takes a little while for the Blender developer team to make sure it hits a quality bar and then get it into the release cycles. So what we're seeing is Summer of Code 2013 paint features being added. Is anybody familiar with those? Nope. Okay. I'm sorry? I'd imagine so, yeah. Projection painting kind of stuff. We have uh, the developer of Freestyle is actually building Freestyle for Cycles. I think most of this is in uh, Trunk at the moment. So currently Freestyle is enabled for Blender internal, which is uh, the legacy Blender render engine. So we're pretty excited it's going into Freestyle, or into Cycles, which is our, we call it a physically based render engine? Yeah? Okay. Pi menus is now in Trunk. So actually, hold on, we got some diagrams here. So. Uh, this is Pi Menus down here, so you hit a hotkey and uh, Pi Menus pop up, uh, and you can kind of mouse towards the option that you want, so it's more gestural based. And uh, it, there's a, uh, similar features in other packages, so people have been kind of missing this, are really excited about this feature. There's loads of tutorials on this right now. This is a, a picture of freestyle for cycles and uh, the ability to do textured strokes uh, using, I think, alpha masks. Pretty cool stuff. There's you know some more minor features like down here in the lower left. There's some UI features around tooltips. There's a UI team that's constantly improving the UI with each version. On the upper left, this is what is it? Sunbeams, JT? Sunbeam? It's a compositor feature. No, it's a new node. New node in the compositor that allows you to do. Uh, it's fundamentally something for compositing 2D images, right? Sunbeams into 2D images. Yeah. The way I understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll have maybe Sean. Kennedy possibly present that at a future Blender session. And then there's been some really great sponsorship by Game Studios to do uh, FBX import and import. Anything else anyone wants to bring up? But yeah. Yeah, I request uh, Daniel Salazar, which is one of the developers as well, to put in this version uh, new camera presets. So you can have camera presets for Blackmagic camera, for example, not only for tracking, but also for the normal camera settings. So awesome. Going to this as well, you awesome. So not just iPhone cameras and, yeah. and your standard Canons actually like, like big. They had, they had the, the Blackmagic camera, uh -huh. the original one, but uh, with these ones, we will have two more ones from Blackmagic. OK. So for those that are wondering what we're talking about here, if you go to the camera, go to camera. Wait, hold on. Yeah, camera presets. Here we go. So Blender enables you to kind of select different camera types, which is handy for uh, matching. For tracking, especially for tracking. It's for motion tracking. Yes. But it doesn't have the lens and sensors. You can, because every lens is different. If you have a yeah, Nikon yeah, 28, you tracking, and you have a Canon 28, your focal lens is going to be different. Between but I'm talking about the sensor side. You need to know the sensor side. Yeah, you, you do need to know that. But it doesn't do you any good if you don't know the lens. Well, but when you do the tracking, you can select the lens that you want. If to you use. wanted to match your back, the back plate wants to match the cinematography, it's kind of a problem. 
But when you do tracking, you can select the sunlight. Yeah, you can. And you can select the, the lens. But you can't select the lens. You can select the lens. No, you can't because it's a generic lens. This the, is kind the of like solver, Yeah, the you, solver resolves that. There has been some developer talk on adequately uh, simulating the lens. You're not talking about that before. Yeah. The They're talking about it, so that's the beginning stage. Oh, Eventually, that's something will be done about it. That's really good. Because that yeah. makes a big yeah, the, sol the solver helps deal with the lens curvature of the actual physical lens as opposed to. Just a generic and then you simulation. also want to be able to make sure that your depth of field matches up right. real life. Yeah, because that's one of the things that's yeah. bringing that up is people wanting proper depth of field. Yeah, that's that's encouraging. That's very encouraging. Yeah, there's talk. <laughs> that's encouraging. It's a good start. The the feature guides for two seven two are coming up. They're online by all means. You know, uh, check them out. And so and since we're in bug fixing mode, I think we kind of we could all download Blender builds. I'll just actually pop here because we've got some folks in the room that may not be familiar. So key websites to know, the, the Blender website, obviously, uh, for getting your official Blender versions that are released. Uh, Blender Artists is kind of where people go to talk about works in progress, to ask questions. It's kind of like the forum uh, for Blender folks. Blender Nation is like the New York Times for Blender. Bart, who was one of the original uh, Blender Foundation members, he's, he runs that. He does a fantastic job of just posting all the really, aggregating lots of interesting Blender news. Um, CG Cookie and Blender Guru, I put in here because folks asked me at previous meetings, these are two information sources to go to for high quality Blender tutorials. They are by no means the only ones. They're, there's a huge array of training sites for Blender that post absolutely free content and some that post paid content. And then BuildBot is where you go to get your pre-release builds. So builder.blender.org slash download is where I go. And I usually by VCon 3, things start to get pretty stable. And so and a lot of features are in. So I usually start to download it and use it on non-production stuff. So anybody have anything else they want to announce before we pass on to the next presenter? Books, classes, any updates on CG or visual effects events? Uh, I don't know if yep. anyone here has experience in building a budget farm or know somebody who can build a budget farm. Okay, so the, the request for folks online that may not have heard that is we're looking for an expert on building a render farm. Uh, so, so uh, there was, by the way, Kent Trammell did do a tutorial on CG Cookie on building a budget render farm. There is also, there is also res power, R -E -S, power R-E-S, power.com, just one word. Uh, that's a new one that they showed off at SIGGRAPH, and it's kind of like a subscription thing. You pay for a pass or a week pass or whatever. They're pretty effective, for, like, pretty low cost. And uh, you, it works with Blender, works with Blender, Maya, and no, V-Ray, a whole bunch of things. Um, but it's a subscription-based render farm, so it's something to look at if you guys are interested in that. Yeah, there's a, there's a number of good commercial render farms, Render Street. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the one that you just said, Dave. But Render Street's a, a one that seems to be popular. Also, uh, there's something called Sheepit Render, which is a peer-to-peer -peer render farm for Blender, which is kind of interesting if you're operating on a budget. I donated CPU cycles and GPU cycles to that because there's a lot of people in developing nations that just can't afford the computing hardware. Uh, render Street is the commercial one, and Sheep It Render is the peer-to-peer uh, -peer one. And then you get credits for donating CPU time and then priority in their queue. Anyhow, uh, if you want to build something like this, uh, you know, Ken trammell has got a full video online on, on how to do that. Like an old filing yeah, he, he bought an IKEA filing cabinet, and then each one of these is a is a chunky little PC, and then he VNCs into them. He actually just recently did a, a tutorial on how to render a single frame across multiple systems faster, which is pretty cool. Yeah, just uh, using standard Blender features, which is pretty awesome. Uh, okay, so I am now like 10 minutes over time. Do we have uh, Michael? Uh, is Michael on the line? I see him online. There we go, Michael Richards. Hey, 